a result from event number eight, the Men's Collegiate Varsity Invitational Copley Cup, heat number two, was won by Stanford, second, Temple, third, UC, at UC San Diego, fourth, Jacksonville, and fifth, Northeastern. So the crew's moving through to the final of the Copley Cup from the first heat, Cal, Oregon State, and Michigan, and in the second heat, Stanford, Temple, and UC San Diego. The Cushman Wellness Center at Sharp Memorial Outpatient Pavilion offers customized health appraisals designed to help you prolong your good health. Call 1-800-82-SHARP or visit sharp.com slash Cushman to learn more. Sharp Memorial Hospital. Thank you, Lots of Pasta, for a wonderful pasta dinner last night. Lots of Pasta has a variety of delightful handmade fresh pastas and sauces. Crews, teams, families, and friends, whether you're looking for a workout fuel or a great meal, Lots of Pasta is the place to go. Lots of Pasta, located just blocks away on Garnett Avenue in the Vaughn's Shopping Center. We're on the water in the stake boats, hopefully getting ready for the women's collegiate fours. Alan, this is the second heat of the Jessup Whittier Cup, the uh, women's uh, feature event, the Women's Collegiate Varsity Invitational. And the crews, as you look at them on the Jumbotron, closest to you is in lane six, Purdue University, in lane five, University of Oklahoma, four, Oregon State. Three, University of Wisconsin. Two, University of Washington. And in lane one, Stanford University. They seem to have come very evenly off the line. Not much separation on the crews. The only crew that seems to have dropped back just a tad at the moment may be the University of Wisconsin. As we come down into the second half of the first 500, slight lead to Stanford, closely followed by Washington, although Wisconsin, my mistake, have a slight lead over Washington as we come down. It's Oregon State and Oklahoma and Purdue who seem to be trailing that top three at the moment. Although we're seeing a strong performance from the University of Oklahoma, they certainly haven't lost touch with the Stanford, Washington, Wisconsin triumvirate. Perhaps you're listening to the mic of our coxswain for the Purdue crew, and we'll listen for a while as they come through 500 meters. Here's the 500 meter mark, first five over. First five, here comes the second five. Quick, swing long, quick, swing long. Breathe on two seats. And jump it back. And jump it back. Sit up tall. You can go as fast for me. Tall. Swing it. Tall. Swing it. That's it, ladies. That's it. Give me a power tank. Quick off the gas. That's one. Pop it up. Two. Pop. Lengthen. Three. Lift. Lengthen. Four. Jump up. And five. Jump it up. That's it, ladies. That's it, ladies. Right here. You've got Seems it. Seems to be Stanford. Followed by Wisconsin in second. Followed by Washington in third. Oregon State has seemed to have fallen back. Oklahoma in the fourth spot at the moment, haven't lost touch with Wisconsin in third spot. Once again mentioned in the background, you can hear the mic coxswain of the Purdue crew, and you can hear how hard the coxswain work during these races. Obviously, the rowers are working hard as well, but it's kind of nice to hear the inside action of what's going on in the shell at uh, the race time. In this race, Stanford have had two competitive races this year. They've beaten Virginia and UCLA. This is the first time out for Washington in spring 2011. Wisconsin have beaten Oklahoma, but lost to Texas. 
Oregon State have beaten Gonzaga. Oklahoma have had a lot of racing. They've beaten Tulsa, Kansas, Creighton, Southern Methodist, Louisville, and Central Florida, but they've gone down to the Wisconsin crew that's two lanes over in this race. Purdue have beaten Marist and Eastern Michigan, but they've gone down to Clemson, Indiana twice, Alabama, Boston University, Syracuse, and Notre Dame. Checking once again our lane assignments. It's Stanford in lane number one. That's closest to the shoreline here, and they're currently on the lead. In lane number two, the University of Washington. In lane three, and in second spot, University of Wisconsin. In lane four, that's Oregon State. Out there in lane five is the University of Oklahoma, and the Mike crew is in lane number six. That is Purdue University. With the winds continuing to be somewhat light and variable, it's not quite a problem as they're coming through the Ingram Street Bridge area. On the shoreline, that's Stanford University. Their outside shoulder is Wisconsin with the University of Oklahoma out there in lane number five refusing to go away. So it looks like we've got three crews and then almost open water back with the exception of the University of Washington to Oregon State and Purdue on the far outside. Yes, it looks as though Stanford have got this race well under control. They've been challenged by University of Wisconsin in lane three, but uh, University of Washington are tracking the University of Wisconsin hard, and out on the far side, Oklahoma are not out of this mix. They might yet still be in the, uh, aiming to slip into that third qualifying spot for the grand final. Looking at Stanford University along the shoreline and Washington has begun to pick it up with about 500 meters to go. Yes, it's a very big push from Washington here. They seem to have drawn level with Wisconsin and pushed past them by maybe one, maybe two seats. Stanford University on the shoreline continues to hold on, but Washington certainly has picked up the pace and begun to close ground. It's Washington in lane number two, eclipsing the University of Wisconsin in lane three. Then outside, looking at University of Oklahoma, and then back inside to Oregon State at the far outside Purdue. Along the shoreline, this is Stanford. Washington continues to close ground and carry past Wisconsin. Stanford, Washington, Wisconsin, Oklahoma University, Oregon State, and Purdue. This is Stanford with open water. Stanford on the lead. It is Washington, University of Washington in second spot. They've gone past the University of Wisconsin. Then outside is Oklahoma. Oregon State is on the inside and on the far outside is Purdue. Back to near our finish line. It looks like Stanford will be the unofficial winner. Both Washington and Wisconsin kind of backed off once they established their situations because the top three are moving forward. And unofficially, it looks like Washington second, Wisconsin in third. Then to the outside, that is University of Oklahoma. And the trailing will be Oregon State and Purdue. Once again, the unofficial finish for the second heat of the Women's Collegiate Varsity Cup, this being the Jessup Whittier Cup. And moving forward, apparently, will be Stanford, University of Washington, University of Wisconsin, followed by University of Oklahoma, Oregon State University, and Purdue. Upcoming in the program is a new event for this year. Actually, there are several new events this year, but this is the first of the new events this year. Uh, and out of the norm for the Crew Classic, which has always been a regatta focused on eights, we have a women's collegiate coxed four race. Uh, the reason for introducing these races is because at the NCAA level, the team competition, which is the premier competition competed for at the NCAA level, is features a first eight, a second eight, and a four. So these athletes, in theory, are the 
fifth quartet of athletes in a women's varsity rowing squad. And uh, these athletes will be hoping to establish some uh, credibility and a pecking order in terms of ranking of teams for the NCAA championships. We have a result from the Women's Collegiate Invitational Varsity, the Jessup Whittier Cup, Heat 1, a win for USC, second Cal, third Washington State, who just got it over UCLA in fourth, University of San Diego in fifth, and Iowa in sixth. We're about ready to start with event number 11. This is the Women's Collegiate Four with Coxon.